Welcome back, American Lit Scholars. In this video, we are talking about the impressive and well and vital speaker and feminist and abolitionist, uh, the former slave known as Sojourner Truth. And the most amazing thing about her, at least to me as a, a poet, uh, she chose her own name. She could have chosen any name at all, and that was the one she went with. And you cannot do better than the name Sojourner Truth. I don't care how long or you look through the dictionary. You're not going to come up with a better combination than that. This kind of gives lie to everything that Jefferson said about African Americans' intellect and their command for oratory and that sort of thing. But let's get into a little bit about Miss Sojourner Truth. <laughs> She was born a slave in Ulster County, New York, um, lived to be about 86 years old, emerged as one of the nation's most flamboyant advocates for the rights of African-American women. At least five of her children were sold into slavery before New York State involved, uh, abolished 18, uh, slavery in 1827. And though she never learned to read or write, she successfully sued for the return of one of her sons in 1829. In 1843, she had a visionary experience left and that left her convinced that God wanted her to speak the truth about the evils of American sins against blacks and women. Like Angelina Grimke, she regularly spoke before mixed audiences of men and women, presenting them with the causes of anti-slavery and women's rights as inextricably intertwined. With the publication of the Narrative of Sojourner Truth in 1850, a life history that she dictated to Oliver Gilbert, she gained even greater renown. Harriet Beecher Stowe regarded Truth as an inspiring example of the black Christian woman as an anti-patriarchal reformer. She was not alone in being influenced by newspaper reporters of Truth's dramatic speeches. In the summer of 1851, Truth addressed a women's rights convention in Akron, Ohio. And the account that follows is from the June 21st edition of the Anti-Slavery Bugle. And this is the version that we have here. Uh, the version that I've uploaded to Blackboard varies just a little bit and is performed by the inimitable Kerry Washington. Um, fantastic, clever piece of, of rhetorical uh, discourse. Uh, she's clever, she's funny, she's witty, and she drives her point home. All right? um, it is hard to listen to this and not feel at least a little bit indicted. Imagine her audiences were pricked to their hearts, but in a good way. And she did it and presented it in such a clever and witty way that um, you were both inspired and maybe a little, a little lectured without feeling too terrible about it. Okay. So let's take a look here at a little bit of it. I want to say a few words. I am a woman's rights. I have as much muscle as any man. I can do as much work as any man. I have plowed and reaped and husked and chopped and mowed and can and can any man do more than that? I have heard much less about the sexes being equal. I can carry as much as any man. I can cut as much too, and if I can get it. Uh, I am as strong as any man that is now. As her intellect, I can say, all I can say is, if a woman have a pint and a man a quart, why can't she have her little pint full? You need not be afraid to give us our rights for fear that we'll take too much, but we can't take more than a pile of hold. The poor men seem to be all in confusion and don't know what to do. Why, children, if you have women's rights, give it. If uh, why, children, if you have women's rights, give it to her and you will feel better. You will have your own rights, and you won't be in so much trouble. I can't read, but I can hear, and I heard the Bible and have heard that Eve caused man to sin. Well, if a woman upset the world, do give her a chance to set it right again. The lady has spoken about Jesus, how he never spurned a woman from him, and she was right. When Lazarus died, and Mary and Martha came to him with faith and love and besought him to raise her their brother, and Jesus wept, Lazarus came forth. And how came Jesus into this world? Through God who created him, and woman who bore him. And man, where is your part? But the women are coming up, are blessed be God, and a few of the men are coming up with them. But a man is in a tight place. The poor slave is on him, the woman is coming on him, and he is surely between a hawk and a buzzard. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's look at this here. We have all the rhetorical proofs that Aristotle ever, ever put to field and mentioned. We have ethos, right? 
Um, he establishes herself as a character, establishes her character, authority to speak here. He says, I'm a woman. I am here to speak to this group as a woman. And, you know, I know <laughs> I, I can't read or write, but I've heard things. So I have heard the Bible. OK, and this is illusion. This is borrowing, uh, borrowing authority ethos here. He, she says, um, don't worry, we're not going to take more than we more than our share. But you need to allow us to have what we ha what we have, what we what we can you know achieve. Give us the opportunity to live up to our full potential. Okay. So you got you have both logos and pathos there. You have the an appeal to the emotions and the audience's sense of fairness and what's right. It's also logic. And it's, look, you'll feel better. It makes sense if you give us our rights. You'll do a good turn for yourselves here. It's, it's such a clever thing, too, here. And, and uh, again, when she says, look, I, I heard that, you know, that, that Eve uh, brought sin in the world. Well, give us a chance to fix what we did. Give us a chance to set the world right again. And he says, you know, and this is the in the last two, last couple of lines here, probably a nod to her audience. And, you know, you, it, she really does have, have a great sense, has a great sense of audience here. He goes, you know, other women are coming up and men are, men are coming up with them. But with women coming up and men come, and uh, slaves coming up too. Oh, man, men, white men must feel like they're caught between a hawk and a buzzard. Right? A bird of prey and a carrion eater. <laughs> so, brilliant piece of, of rhetorical discourse. And it only took a few minutes here. Um... And it's just an excerpt of the speech. I, again, I've put the, the Kerry Washington video, the A9 Woman speech on here for your edification and for your further uh, study. It, it is a fantastic piece. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the amazing Sojourner Truth. And I'll leave you with this quote here on the screen. Life is a hard battle anyway. If we laugh and sing as little as we fight the good fight of freedom, it makes it all go easier. I will not allow my life's light to be determined by the darkness around me. And that's something you can take home with you. I'll see you in the next video.